Hi Sequels friends! Today we are doing another unboxing and this time it is a Jomar unboxing. I've purchased from Jomar. This will be the third time. The first one was a vintage box, the second one was a shoe box, and lo and behold this one is a vintage shoe box. So I'm pretty excited to share with you not only what I got, how much it cost, but also, and most importantly, how much moolah do I think I can make on this box. So if you're new to Joe Mar or you're just a little bit nosy and want to see what I got in my box, then just keep on watching. And as you saw a little preview of today, we are doing a Joe Moore vintage unboxing. So this is going to be a really fun one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me say that first off. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome back. If you have been here before, it is awesome to have you here. So thank you so much for coming back. And if you happen to be new, I should probably tell you who I am. <laughs> My name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Etsy. And I like to use this YouTube channel to document my journey. So whether you love all things reselling, dipping into numbers, nitty gritty, over analysis, deep dives, I love all that stuff. Or if you're into fashion, fun, thrifted, things, secondhand, um, first mentality, then this is a great channel for you. And also, if you love unboxings from wholesalers like Joe Mar, ThreadUp, Bulk, and the like, you are in the right place. So you might as well just go ahead, get it over with, and hit that subscribe button so that you're notified every Tuesday or Friday when I upload new videos. Let's get right into it. I got my cheat sheet here. So this is the Joe Mart Vintage Shoe Box, not to be confused with the last shoe box that I unboxed, which was just their regular shoe box. I'll link that one above if you came over here thinking it might be that one. You could check that one out too. Or if you want to see the difference between the two boxes. This is the Vintage Shoe Box, and in this box you get 15 pairs of shoes. It typically costs $50, but I had a 10% off coupon, so it cost me $45. And shipping for me to North Carolina was $8.59. So my total buy-in is $53.59. Out of the 15 pairs, I am going to list 14 of the items as one to me is too damaged to list. And that makes my cost of goods for each item only $3.83. I like to keep it pretty positive here on sequels, but also I keep it real. <laughs> so I'm going to positively tell you <laughs> how annoyed I am with Jomar in this box for one main reason, and that is delivery times and follow-up customer service. Did not have any of these issues on the other two boxes I bought. So one out of three are still pretty good odds. I'm still comfortable ordering from them, but I will have be a little bit more prepared that this may be the case of something that's gonna to happen to me in the future. This box I ordered on 326. I was told it would take four weeks to get to me. My last vintage box took exactly four weeks. My previous shoe box took two weeks. So it stood to reason that I would wait four weeks. I got to the four week mark, no signs that the item has been delivered. So I casually reached out to Jomar and inquired, hey, we're at the four week, I think it was between the four and five week mark, hey, we're past the quoted delivery times, can you please let me know what's going on? They said that they were behind by a week. I said, okay, no problem, I'll leave you alone, I'll sit patiently over here and wait another week. Another week goes by, my item still, my box still hasn't shipped, okay. This is a little annoying, so I reached back out again. Hey, by the way, I reached out a week ago. You guys told me you were a week behind, so I anticipated that my box would ship this week, and I haven't heard anything, and I get no response. Okay. <laughs> Being the everly patient person that I'm trying to be, I said, okay, well, I'll wait another week. So we are at week seven now <laughs> out of a delivery that was quoted at four weeks. I reach out again. I'm a little bit frustrated. <laughs> you guys have not shipped my box. You have not responded to my last email. And I like to go ahead and cancel my order and have my items, you know, money refunded. Oh, I don't hear from them. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be that person but you're kind of forcing me to be that person. 
So before I post a negative comment on your Facebook page, let me just reach out to you via social media and see if I can get a response. So I reached out via social media. Hey, <laughs> you told me this box was gonna ship in four weeks. We're at the seven week mark. I've yet to get an, any firm date of when this is gonna ship. That is beyond frustrating. I would like a refund, please. And um, don't worry about shipping out the merchandise. I don't hear anything from them and then I get a notification that my box is shipped out. So a couple hours later after I get that notification, they do reach out back to me by, via Facebook, issue an apology and say that the team is already working on it. So just a little bit frustrating to me from a customer service standpoint. I am the type of person with my customers that as soon as they ask me a question, I respond to them. If I don't have a firm answer, I tell them I don't have a firm answer, but I will get them a firm answer within a certain period of time. Um, I do not feel that that is the way that they responded at all, which to me is quite frustrating. And I also don't like the kind of attitude of, oh, it's in the works when it wasn't in the works until I bitched about it on multiple platforms. Just tell me like it is. And if it's not gonna ship until week seven, tell me that and let me make the decision as to whether or not I wanna wait that amount of time or just give me a refund on the item so that I don't have to wait that amount of time. So two out of three customer experiences great in that I didn't even talk to them. <laughs> to me, that's the perfect customer experience. I don't have to interact with you at all and I get my shit when you told me my show was gonna get here. But the third experience, I'm not very happy with. With that said, let's get into the goodies that uh, we have here. It is, they do appear to be all vintage items. Um, I'm a little taken aback that they're all dress shoes. <laughs> I kind of suspected that it would be a mix of various things and it looks like they're mostly all 90s. So all 90s, all dress shoes, but they definitely appear to all be vintage. I'm gonna do the same strategy I've been doing in my last unboxing videos where I kind of group together by price point. We're gonna start at the lowest price point. Um, and then we're gonna work our way up to the higher price. So at the lowest price point in the 14 to $24 range, we have these really pretty um, yellow peep toe, little uh, wooden heel dress shoes, um, but they are Anne Klein, which doesn't really move for me at all and has only moved for me on clearance. However, I am gonna start these out at a normal price because I haven't sold a vintage Anne Klein to see if they move, but if I have to clearance these, I will not be surprised. They were a bit dirtier when I got them. I did try to clean them up a bit. They are still not in pristine condition at all, which is reflective of the price, but a really cool wooden, almost kitten-like heel, the peep toe, and a very 90s oval buckle, and I gotta tell you, I love the golden yellow color. So, 14 to 24. Next up, 19 to 29. Um, so these are Nina, which is not a very high-end brand, um, but they are very cute. A almost like a satin black fabric, traditional um, pump with a pointed toe. And the next pair in that same 19 to 29 range. You'll be able to see it very well, but it is Franco Sarto. They are a very 90s, 2000s. Um, in fact, I think I called them 2000s because to me they give me a little bit more 2000s vibe than 90. They are called the Slinky and I didn't give the sizes. The Ninas were an 8, the Ann Kleins are a 7.5 and, and these are a 7.5 as well. They do have a leather upper in white with black patent leather piping, peep toe, sling back, kitten heel, very 90s, 2000s. I would expect based on trend that these should move pretty well. Next up are my favorite and they were the cover shot of this video because they are my favorite, not because they're the highest price point or anything. I just love them. They are 90s Stuart Weitzman. Gorgeous wine, burgundy, suede upper. Square toes, super 90s. Little Mary Jane, a super 90s. It has a faux button closure with a little elastic, so there's some room in there. And then I love this like black kitten, shiny black heel. These are like, if there's such thing as like business grunge, <laughs> to me, these are exactly that. I love them, love them. They are not my big ass foot size. 
10, but they are an eight and a half. So far, the sizes on here are very, very saleable. Next up are a bunch of shoes that are clearly dead stock. I believe they are Saks, off Saks Fifth Avenue dead stock. Um, most all of them are dead stock. Some of them have the prices on them, some of them don't, but I assume that they are still from the same dead stock um, bunch. <laughs> and if you don't know what dead stock is, that is vintage product that has come directly from a store, still has tags on it, and just never sold. I have sold dead stock pieces, um, but I don't I, I just don't always know if people are gonna pay up for them. So because of that, I have a pretty decent range. These are all in the 29 to 49 range, gonna start at 49. All of them are pumps. All of them are very classic pumps in very classic colors. And they are in a totally gorgeous 90s pump silhouette. And they all, all are Charles Jordan Parrish. Parrish? <laughs> Charles Jordan Paris, <laughs> which is a very high-end quality leather shoe brand made in Spain. And these are a size eight in a classic black leather. Love that, a nice big tall heel. I believe these are four inches. Um, a cute, well, that's maybe an almond toe, rounded toe. And uh, I love these block heels very very nice Charles Jordan as you can see these are dead stock but they do not have the tags on them but they still have the paper and everything in them um, these are again classic 90s silhouette they do not have the chunky heel you have more of a stiletto style but they are in a very 90s black velvet a pump and these have a bit more of a pointed toe here's another version of those but they're in black patent leather yes again Charles Jordan um, except for these have the price tag on them which uh, let's see it says they originally retailed for 195 though they did come from off fifth and their last price was at $54.90 um, I will most likely take this price tag off um, I am starting them as a reminder at 49 again that same silhouette with the pointed toe the same silhouette with the stiletto and these are all eights that's an eight double a these right here are an eight medium again same silhouette same Charles Jordan same with tags dead stock and these are a hard color to identify the ring lights really gonna shine on them and throw it off even more I called it a pewter I believe but it's almost it's not silver and it's not quite gold and it's definitely not dark enough to be a bronze it's reading a little bit more gold to me on camera than it does in real life I just called them pewter <laughs> Uh, but again, same silhouette, same toe, same silhouette with the um, stiletto. And lo and behold, there is another pair of <laughs> Charles Jordan. And in case you're shocked, it's the same silhouette. <laughs> Pointed toe, stiletto heel. These are in a very yellowy gold, um, uh, patent leather, but there are some problem spots. I tried to clean and they did not come clean and some of the shine is wearing off. But again, they are dead stock. So Lord no, oh. <laughs> they are dead stock. So Lord knows where these been and how long they've been banging around. Um, these I might price uh, $10 cheaper and do the 19 to 29 because of the flaws. And then I have actually sold one pair they were basically these shoes. I will pop them up right here. They sold two days within listing. They were these exact silhouette with the chunky heel and the more rounded toe, but in a navy leather. And I gotta tell you, pretty much everything that I buy in navy leather sells and it sells quickly. If you see navy leather shoes, purses, any of that sort of thing. I'd imagine belts, although I'm not really much of a belt seller, then I would definitely pick them up. People love navy and it is hard to get your hands on. And we got one more in the 29 to 49. These are vintage size seven, nine west. 
And if you are a 90s, 2000 gal like I am, um, you will definitely recognize this silhouette. Brown, brown, brown. How popular was brown during the 90s and 2000s? And they have a fabric upper, a pointed toe, and then what makes these a little bit more fun is they have the wrap around the ankle. And see if I could do it right here so you could see how that would wear. Really pretty. So that's everything in that price point. Now the last three items are higher end goods and I have them all in the 39 to 69 range. Yes, that 30 bucks is a hell of a range, but again, vintage designer. I have no idea what these can go for. There are not a lot of comps out there except for on this first pair that I'm gonna show Salvatore you. Salvatore Ferragamo. They are the Vera, if I remember correctly. Um, they are a size 7C. There is some wear on the inside, you can see right there. There is also some wear on the edges of the bow, and there is also some wear on the toe, which I haven't hit up with some Wonder Balsam, but it's not gonna make it go away. <laughs> it might disguise it a little bit. Very, very classic silhouette, blocky low heel, a really cute fabric bow, which I'm not sure if you can see right there that it does say Ferragamo on it. And they are in a black leather. Very good quality shoe. Yes, there is some wear and tear, but there is still a lot of life left in these bibas, and they are definitely made in Italy if you are curious. <sighs> Talk about a 90 silhouette. Oh my God, if these were, oh my God, I love them. These are a size 8B. They are Alter Ego. What I really love about these are their 90s vibes and the total uniqueness. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera. Let me get in there and put my hands in there. This is all a black mesh. It's that minimalist sexiness that you expect from the 90s. Super huge block heel. It's got to be double the width of the other ones. That mesh upper and then it's like a pointed square toe. I mean, these this silhouette is just so gorgeous. I don't know what to make of these. I don't know. I, I, part of me feels like this is a grandmama shoe, and then part of me thinks that this has um, really like academia, dark academia vibes, and then part of me just feels like they're super cute retro. So, um, I don't know. Guys, comment below and let me know what you think of these shoes. They are Wilkes Bashford. They are by Wilson and Dean for Wilkes Bashford. They are a made in Italy shoe and they are definitely high end, wonderful qual uh, quality, beautiful soles, look, barely look worn, but they have been worn um, based on the wear on the inside and then also their little shoestring tabs are worn. But it is, um, very bowling shoe-esque <laughs> in a suede, brown suede with navy. I don't know, something about them to me seems goofy, but goofy in like a cool to style way. I might have to do a uh, flat lay for you guys with these and post it on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me, I will pop my Instagram up here. You'll definitely want to go over there. But I'm thinking like dark academia with this and like a pencil wool skirt and then, you know, uh, a top with a cardigan or a blazer over it would just be too freaking cute. I don't know. Let me get, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see if you think that these are fun to play with or if they're total grandmamas. This is the last pair of shoes that I got, but I am not selling, which I thought was disappointing because they are Adrian Vitadini, which I remember from back in the 90s, 2000s as being a pretty decent brand. But when I looked up comps, the resale value wasn't really there. But the reason why, um, oh, and there's the label logo if you wanna see it. They are uh, made in Italy. They are eight and a half double A's. And they were, they are dead stock, again, from off fifth. And it says that they compared at 125 and they were selling them for 39 and apparently they didn't sell. But can you see in here, the whole liner is pilling. 
And again, this is dead stock, so I don't know what happened, what got into it that it's peeling like that, or peeling like that. It's all over and it's falling off on everything and it just doesn't seem worthwhile to sell it, especially since you're under $4 for each shoe pair and that the other ones look like they had some decent value in them. I figured it wasn't worth my time to waste with those. As a reminder, we have gotten 15 pairs of shoes. I am going to list 14 of these. They're all pretty much 90s and 2000s, a bunch of dead stock. Um, the box costs 50, it cost me 45 because I had a 10% off coupon and the shipping to me cost about $9. So the total comes to 53.59 or about um, $54 and the cost of goods for each pair, removing that pair that I'm not selling comes out to 383. So the real question while you're here, how much money do I think I can make on this box? Again, remember that range is pretty decent since it's vintage and who the hell really knows because it's not easy to run comps on this product. But we invested, I invested, <laughs> we the sequels family <laughs> invested about 54 dollars on this box and i am hoping to make anywhere from 421 dollars to 671 dollars i don't know i don't know if it's true either but i like where these numbers are coming out if i invested 54 dollars and i make 450 dollars which knowing me will end up being 300 and some once it's net because these are gross numbers that still is not bad at all and with the tibet and with the potential to make almost $671, that seems a little crazy. This is why I love vintage product. So that's what we have today for the Jo Mart Vintage Shoe Unboxing. I'd love, as always, to hear what you guys think. There are some really cute silhouettes in here, but also, I'm not kidding myself, there is a lot of dress shoe in here. So it'll be really interesting to see how this turns out. Now, if you didn't do it in the beginning, I highly encourage, if you made it this far, to do it now. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you're notified every Tuesday and Friday when I upload new videos. Love to hear from you guys. Please comment, subscribe, like this if you found it useful. Your interactions here on my channel not only give me warm fuzzies, but they also really help with my algorithm and they help get this YouTube out to more people and I appreciate that. And don't forget if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to me on Instagram. I have not been a good social media person, but I am working on it and I am having fun interacting with you guys. So that is a great place to see what's going on day to day for a part time reseller. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you and I hope you have a wonderful summer weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday with a new video. Have a great one guys. Bye!